Singapore reported its first case of the new coronavirus on January the 23rd, and has since become one of the worst infected countries outside China. The atmosphere on the streets of the city-state has been composed, despite a scattering of face masks, temperature checks, and some remote working. It's generally business as usual. However, some Chinese netizens have called Singapore's response complacent rather than calm, warning that it could become the next Wuhan. When they see the news from Singapore, like my family, <clears throat> they also are very worried that Singapore is going to be the next Wuhan. I understand from their perspective, but when I gradually read more reports, I think、um, they are doing from their perspective. They are protecting their people in their own ways. I do believe that the government, even though people are complaining here and there, people have that trust essentially at the back of their minds、uh, that they would kind of like have our backs、uh, when. Uh, the, the cards are being stacked against us. Two weeks ago, Singapore authorities raised its disease outbreak response system condition, or DORSCOM, level to orange, the second highest status. The same was issued during the SARS period. This announcement led to a wave of panic buying, leaving some shops temporarily out of stock of staple foods. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong later posted a video message to assure Singaporean residents that they would not lock down the city and that they had ample supplies. Meltwater, a media intelligence company, has been following the interactions of social media users in the city-state. What we identified at Meltwater is the operational excellence of making sure the right、um, building managements are done, right checks are done, detection facilities are available. That's really strongly positively、uh, seen in the online space. The second discussion is regarding how quickly the information is given to the public. So there is a lot of transparency, and I think that was very well received online. While reassuring its residents by providing transparent information, the Singapore government has also put in place strict measures, such as the 14-day quarantine period, a robust screening and tracing program. And temperature checks at public spaces. A lot of Chinese residents are not well informed about the precautions and actions Singaporeans have been taking. But more importantly, because the situation here in Singapore is very mild,、uh, there is no need to overreact or pursue policies of complete community lockdown, which make a lot of sense in China. Singapore is a very small state with a very flat governance structure. China is very different. China is much bigger. And has to have a more hierarchical governance structure. It's very natural for the Chinese citizens' attitudes towards the government to be different, and the sense of trust to vary across government levels. Some argue that Singapore is adopting this relatively relaxed policy because the island nation is heavily dependent on international trade and external resources, and simply can't afford to cut itself off. For now, public opinion seems to be upbeat as the number of people being discharged after recovering from the virus has outnumbered the new cases being reported for the past few days. However, only time will tell whether Singapore could sail through this epidemic unscathed. Miralu, CGTN, Singapore.